We're going to practice our warm-up this morning on page 397, Christ Be Our Light. Or Christ Be Beside Me, I'm sorry. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Mass as we celebrate this Labor Day weekend. In the Gospel today, Jesus teaches the difficult demands of being his disciples. What he said caused some to walk away from his mission. Jesus teaches that in order to follow him, we must carry the cross and renounce all possessions. Even family obligations have to be reconsidered by those who choose to follow him. What will you do? Our entrance song is on page 460, I Heard the Voice of Jesus. Please rise.
asking us to do something very special if we want to be his follower, if we want to be his disciple. And I think all of us want to follow him. All of us want to go to heaven. So he asks us a very special message. Do we want to follow him? And so we pray, Lord Jesus, you fill us at daybreak with your kindness, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you invite us to be your disciples. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to be with Christ. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And we pray together. Glory, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Who can know God's counsel, or who can conceive what the Lord intends? For the deliberations of mortals are timid, and unsure are our plans. For the corruptible body burdens the soul, and the earthen shelter weighs down the mind that has many concerns. And scarce do we guess the things on earth and what is within our grasp we find with difficulty. But when things are in heaven, who can search them out? Or who ever knew your counsel, except you had given, them, given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high? And thus were the paths of those on earth made straight. The word of the Lord. them 
in their sleep. The next morning they are like the changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew, but by evening wilts and fades. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O oh Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. And may the gracious care of the Lord our God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. In every age, O oh Lord, A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. I, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Jesus Christ, urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself, so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good you do might not be forced, but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother, beloved especially to me, but even more so to you as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and he addressed them. 
If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, this one began to build but did not have the resources to finish. Or what king marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing on him with 20,000 troops. But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, any one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. I, I feel that the gospel really needs some explanation today. Jesus said, if anyone comes to me without hating his father or mother, brother or sister, husband or wife, children, or even his very self, he cannot be my disciple, cannot be my follower. What does, he, what does Jesus mean? You know, in, 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 in Jewish culture, <laughs> honoring your parents, loving your parents, <laughs> respecting your parents, loving your parents was the most important thing that anyone could do. If you remember the story when Jesus was just 12 years old when he got lost in the temple, or at least his parents thought he was lost. They hadn't seen him for three days when they finally found him. And what does scripture say? But he went home with them and he was obedient to them. Jesus had great respect for his parents. Jesus condemned anyone who would not take care of his, their parents. He was very, would get very angry with people. You know, in those days they didn't have social security. They didn't have retirement funds at work. If someone was not able to work anymore because of age they, or illness or whatever, they had no income. So they depended completely upon their children. And Jesus was always after people. You have to support your parents. You have to support your family. And there were some people who would not do that. And he condemned them. What Jesus is doing in the gospel story today is making a very important point. As much as we admire our families, as much as we honor them and respect them, as much as we obey them, what Jesus is saying, I want to be first in your life. Put God first in your life and all others second, third, and fourth. Let me just share with you a story of a football player by the name of Gail Sayers. Gail Sayers went to the University of Kansas. He graduated from there and went to the National Football League and was a running back for the Chicago Bears, one of the finest running backs that, uh, that, that ever played in the National Football League. Gail Sayers wore a medal around his neck. It was about the size of a half a dollar. And on it were printed three words. Those three words, I am third. I am third. 
He wrote a book entitled it, I Am Third. And he explains what he means by that. When he was at the University of Kansas, he was also on the track team. And one day he was in the track coach's office and he saw a plaque on the man's desk. Bill, uh, Bill Easton was his name. And he had the plaque, it said, I am third. And so Gail Sayers in his book explains what, Gail, what Bill Easton told him. I am third means that God is first, family and friends are second, and I am third. Gail Sayers used this as his motto. He not only carried that medal around, around his neck, but he lived what those words said. But we ourselves sometimes put other things first. God for many of us is not first. And God wants to be first. You know, we put our job or we put our money first or we put sports first, recreation first. You know, I don't know if they do the same in Tama, but in, in Marshalltown, they have Little League. They have football, softball, soccer, swimming, all the sports there are. And most of the competition is on Sunday morning. And so the kids, if they want to play, find it very difficult to go to church. And the kids want to play. And they're disappointed if the parents won't let them play. So the parents have to make a decision. Am I going to let the kids play or am I going to have them go to church? So they grow up without God or without mass at least. And so God is not first in their life. Sports are first. Sometimes it's parties are first. Sometimes sin is first. Let me just share with you a little thought. You know, I... Um, I usually go to Mass on Saturday evening if I'm not helping out in another parish. But on Sunday morning I'll go to, <laughs> I'll go to the golf course. <laughs> I usually don't play on Sunday but I, I, I practice. But you know I see a lot of people out there and they weren't at Mass on Saturday night. And at 8.30 in the morning, they couldn't have gone to the 8 o'clock Mass. And they're not going to be able to get to the 10.30 Mass. So sports came first in their life. Sometimes it's farming we have to take care of. You have to harvest the grain or plant. You have to slop the hogs or feed the cattle or we don't have time for God. We don't have time for God. Let me use an example. Here you have a young couple in love with each other. And the young man says to the girl, you know, I love you, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna date other girls. You, but you, don't you dare date other boys. I'll date girls, but uh, all he's thinking about is himself, isn't it? Or he says to him, I love you, but, you know, I really need a, a new uh, fishing boat. And this one, I, I want to be really a special one with a big heavy motor on it. Or I want an all-terrain vehicle uh, so I can go hunting. And, and, uh, or I need a new set of golf clubs. Or I need this, or I need that. I need a new pickup. 
But you spend your money on uh, what will be the rent and the food and the clothing. And you know, he doesn't love this girl. He loves himself. He's number one in his life. And isn't sometimes that the way we treat God? God is, in many of our lives, is not first. I'm so, so happy to see you people here. And I, I'm, I'm so pleased to see so many parents coming with their little children. It's such a wonderful, wonderful thing. And this is, this is where we put God first, isn't it? God is so, in, so important. But people can neglect God, haven't got time for God, haven't got time to pray, haven't got time to go to church, but they expect God to answer their prayer as soon as they ask. You know, God wants to be worshiped, God wants to be thanked for all he does for us. And yet we come to him and, and we say, God, I, uh, this person I love very much is dying, uh, help, help that person. Uh, and then they'll come back and say, well, God doesn't answer my prayers. And we expect God to answer our prayers and we don't talk to him ever. Don't have time for him. Jesus really isn't saying, hate your parents. He says, love them. Enjoy the things that you can enjoy. But I want to be first. I want to be first in your life. Where is God in your life? God is so special in our life, so we pray our creed, acknowledging our creed. I believe in one God, 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 Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from God. God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and arose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord our God, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that God will prosper the work of our hands, we present our prayers today asking God to hear and to answer. For our workers, especially the unemployed and the underemployed and the underpaid, that they may receive fair compensation for the work that they do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For policies that promote fair wages, safe working conditions, and humane hours, that those policies may contribute to a healthy family life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all priests and religious, that they may live out their priestly and religious commitment 
through service to all those entrusted to their care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the church, that Christians may live the gospel giving witness to faith, honesty, and love of neighbor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For travelers and pilgrims this Labor Day weekend, that they may have a safe journey to and from their destinations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the preventions of all natural disasters, including flooding, fires, earthquake, tornadoes, and hurricanes, that God will send fair weather and send help to those who have suffered losses of homes, property, or human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the victims of illness, war, violence, or oppression, that their wounds be healed and their lives renewed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have died, especially Marguerite Brickner, that they may follow Jesus into the kingdom of light and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God of refuge and shelter, fill us with your fire and your love. Paul and Jackie Ellen Becker will be bringing the gifts to the altar this morning. Our gifts for the preparation of the Lord. Our gifts for our preparation for the gifts is on page 682. The Lord is my light.
Our song for the preparation of the gifts, for communion song, I'm just off today, I'm sorry, is 324, wheat, gift of finest wheat.
Kelsey is having their annual uh, party, their meal today. Uh, many of them came over here last week to uh, help support your program. So they really like to have your support over there. They start serving, I think, at 11 o'clock, and they serve until early afternoon. If anybody can go, I'm sure they can see the report. Uh, I'll try to send you home with a smile. <laughs> this is a story about a, three men. All three of them died at the same time, and all three of them were pretty bad guys. They all went down. They went down to hell. And uh, the devil met them at the door and said, Hey, you know, I'm pretty generous today. He said, if any of you have anything on your person that I cannot melt by just blowing on it, uh, I'll let you go ahead. So he talked to the first guy and he said, what have you got? He said, I've got my car keys and house keys. He said, put them in your hand and they'll go through. And they melt. Just the next guy reached in his pocket. I can find him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's in here. He had all kinds of coins, quarters, dimes, nickels, double gold. And they all They all know. Me. The third guy reached in his pocket. He had a champagne. No. He opened it up. He put the items in his hand. He held them out to the devil, and the devil goes, and they didn't disappear. And the devil goes, and they didn't disappear. And the devil said, what are those things? He said, they're m and They melt in your bowels. <laughs> <not in your mouth. laughs> checked it out, but make sure you check out the table of plenty before you leave, too. Our parting song is on 603, We Are the Light of the World.
us, O Lord, make us meek and humble. Bless us, O Lord, our God. We are the light of the world. May our light shine before all, that they may see the good that we do and give glory to God. Blessed are they who will mourn be comforted. Bless us, O Lord, when we share their sorrow. Bless us, O Lord.